Hello, my name is Johnny Dreary. Welcome to ShropshireStar.com. Uh, I'm here with Shrewsbury Town correspondent Lewis Cox. Now, Lewis, we were going to record this video originally at 7 p.m. And then we were going to record it at 7.30. And then we were like, right, so we just do it after the deadline to make it easier. And it's a good job we did because Salop has done a little bit of late business. One out, one in late on. I think it's two out, two in across the day. Um, it's been four a busy one. Across the month. Across the month, yeah. Busy one. Busy one, Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. Bit bit naive to say seven o'clock, weren't we? To be fair, a little bit, yeah, yeah, Very a naive. little bit. Um, this is deadline day, after all. Um, yeah, tiring one, really. Uh, quite a tiring day. Um, obviously, Nathaniel Ogbetter's sale to, to Swansea City. It's gone through at eleven o'clock this evening. Bit of a disappointing way to end the window, isn't it? On one like that, you know, you, you if you get a choice, you want to end it on a high, don't you? With a, a good incoming or something like that, but. It's deadline day and you can't have your own way can you and um yeah i mean we'll get onto it i suppose you know we'll get into it i don't know what you want to start with but whether we might surmise it as a whole you know on a whole at the yeah. end but um i think you know i think it'd be fair to say that the mood among the fan base is a little you know is 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 an underwhelmed and sort of disappointed one on on the back of how it's ended perhaps that's a bit of the odd better thing but you know we'll get into obviously you know it's the month as an entirety, I suppose. Yeah. But I, I suppose on our better, you know, we had a good a good few months when we came in, helped Salop survive after he came from Manchester City. Then he had a, a summer last year where he was touted about quite a lot. I think Peterborough might have been one of the yeah. clubs who were, were interested in taking him. It seemed to unsettle him a bit. Uh, you know, Steve Cox was had a few things in the press. He fell out of the team. He's come back in. He's done really well. Um, and I don't think anyone can begrudge him a move to a, a championship club, really, can they? No, I mean... Yeah, it's a, it's a great move for him, isn't it? You know, I know Swansea aren't in the higher reaches of the champ at the moment, but, you know, a recent Premier League club always seems to play good football, don't they? Always seem to bring young players through. They've got Russell Martin there at the minute who plays football um, the right way, plays good football. I'd expect him to do really well there. He is still raw and it'll be a big step up for him. But um, in terms of Shrewsbury losing him, Perhaps a little bit out out the blue today, a little bit of a surprise. Perhaps when when we broke the the news in the afternoon regarding Swansea, um, but perhaps it shouldn't have been a surprise. You know, it's not he's not really been talked about that much this month, has he? Given what went on this last summer, as you say, with Peterborough, but with him, you know, out of contract in the summer, um, obviously as a twenty year old, you know that that would have. That would have meant town offering him a deal you know others coming in and, and a fee having to be decided by a tribunal and all of that with him out of contract so town have obviously sort of you know cashed in there's been strong interest not for the first time um i think swansea have sort of been monitoring it all all month if i'm honest and according to their press had a bid last week didn't they i think we heard um obviously it's come back in strong following last weekend and and he's gone yeah i mean it didn't surprise me when I first heard it, but you're thinking well, that's that's late in the day, you know, type thing. And then obviously, word comes through of town asking about left, left, you know, replacements, left wing backs. Um, I, as I've as I've reported um, in tomorrow's paper, you can see it online. I heard of some interest in a, a Middlesbrough left back, um, Hayden Coulson, who's gone to Peterborough instead. Um, so you're kind of thinking, well, you know why is there interest in the left wing back you know what what's that mean for our better and obviously the, the day transpires and yeah and then you get wind of of the of the newcastle youngster coming in mr uh mr matty bonswell so that you know that it, it all sort of fell into place didn't it and, and bonswell comes in as an obvious like for like um wish i'd better well i can understand why fans are disappointed with him leaving albeit you know i think there's an acceptance he'd have left in the summer um interest in regards to the fee perhaps we can get on to being reported in some places as three hundred thousand pound which i don't think is bad certainly not an insignificant fee for town i i actually um sort of had word it was a bit lower than that albeit six figures so you know maybe they can take that given his contract situation certainly i don't think would have been that much in terms of a tribunal in the summer but yeah a bit you know a, a big high profile departure for town you know played a big part and as a put out online he's had a fair ride hasn't he over this 12 months um played a lot of games had the sort of summer episode go on about his exit and downs ups you know some great performances last season sadly with an empty stadium but gets a brilliant move 
Um, and at least Town have brought in a replacement, you know, someone who can come in and, and hopefully do his job. Yeah, exactly. You know, Bondwell comes in as a, as a relative unknown, but I'm sure Salat fans will hope that he can uh, he can sort of do what Ogbetter did. On on another point, you know, Tom Flanagan comes in. Originally, we thought it was going to be a long yeah, sign yeah. for Sunderland, but it's a two and a half two and a half year deal. You know, yeah, Salah yeah. will be strong at the back uh, this season. They're going to be even stronger now. Yeah, not you know that that's certainly you know while while we're talking about Ogbetter there and you know ending the day eleven o'clock as a as a high profile exit. You know, I think no mistake. You know, make no mistake, I think Tom Flanagan looks to me like a, a great signing, you know, on, on paper to get a Sunderland defender who has not, you know, not been on the fringes for them this season, being a, a regular, um, played a lot of games. I think 25 of their 29 league games he started and, and they are in third place, you know, albeit after the disastrous weekend they've, they've just had. For him to come in, you know, a Northern Ireland international, you know, wealth of experience, I think near 300 games in his career um i mean you you know you saw the loan links and you're thinking all right you know he might do a job brought in if nurse needs to play on the left or, or whatever but for him to you know it's a lengthy permanent contract you think they've probably done well there you know he he's not been out on the cusp of it at sunderland he's been you know heavily involved as we say so i think that that looks like a, a good addition to me that looks like a some good recruitment um, there, were, there was talk of Lyndon Gooch, wasn't there? The fellow, fellow Sunderland player, sort of word was that the town had been in for both Gooch, obviously a, a winger, sort of possibly could fill back into wing back. I'm not sure, but word was that one didn't come off. And, and then obviously Flanagan arrived, and 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 we got wind of it being a permanent deal, which I think is an excellent capture for the club. I do, like you say, they've been so strong there. So you know, a lot of clean sheets of late, conceded very few goals, among the fewest in the league. Again, something I've written, you know, at the start of play today, you wouldn't think Town would be signing a left wing back in a centre half, would you? That that's just not how we I think we saw it going. Um, but here we are, and those are the two come in. And again, we'll get onto it when we surmise the window. But you know, town fans believe that the team, the squad is lighting other departments, you know, notably going forward. Um, the creativity side of it, you know, they've looked like they've brought in excellent depth of competition at the other end but maybe lacking in other areas. With the, the Flanagan deal, is it interesting, you know, Lee Johnson's just other sack as Sunderland manager. Is this mm. something, do you know, if it's emerged since since then, considering he's played quite a lot for Sunderland this season? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't like to say because I'm not sure, to be honest. It's only a link that's emerged today, but that doesn't mean it's, you know, not been worked on for the, for the entirety of the month. Obviously, we don't know what, you know, whether Lee Johnson would have sanctioned it or not. You know, we don't know that. But, um, yeah. I mean, he didn't play um, Flanagan. He didn't play in their 6-0 defeat to Bolton um, on Saturday, which obviously sort of caused the manager's sacking. I don't know if that's because this move was in mind or, you know, I'm not sure why he came out the side, but, I mean, at least he wasn't involved in a 6-0 shellacking, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, I think on paper the move bodes well. I'm not sure if it's one town have been targeting all month. I'm not sure if it's on the back of, you know, Ogbetter's departure, you, you know, thinking about whether Nurse might have to pull out a position to the left and that might leave you sort of lighter at centre-half. I'm not sure about that, but I think he's obviously become available, as an he? And he's a you know, top centre-half at this level, by all accounts. You know, I've seen him play a few times, but I can't say I know overly too much about him. But, you know, when someone maybe of that stature at this level comes about and you can offer him such a deal, you know, for Shrewsbury to sign a permanent player from a club like Sunderland, perhaps you take it, to be fair. Yeah, and just on, a, on another couple of notes, Raquel Pike goes out the door to, to Scunthorpe and, and Sam Cosgrove, the one we were all probably expecting. His, um, he came with quite a bit of hype, didn't he, after scoring goals in the SPL, but it never really got going. Yeah, it, yeah I mean, quick quick word for, I mean, you touched on, on Matty Bond as well. Obviously, the, the Newcastle teenager who's coming on loan for well better, we talked on that. Um, looking forward to seeing him play, actually. A lot of, you know, a lot of pedigree around him being at Leipzig. Um, I'm told, you know, highly rated, talented player. Similar skill set to Ogbetter. So, you know, expect perhaps a direct pacey, you know, forward thinking wing back. Um, looking forward to seeing what he's about because he's coming for Ogbetter. You know, we expect to see him in the team, I think. You know, I think that's fair to say. Obviously, there's an option of Nurse playing out there, perhaps Lee, but I think we'll see Lee stick around in centre mid. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing what Bondswell's all about, England Youth International. That will be an interesting one. Um, departures, yeah. Uh, Pike and Cosgrove today, as you say, two, and again, this touches on something we've mentioned, isn't it? Two forward thinking you know, forwards out of the door. 
don't get me wrong, forwards who haven't been involved, have they? You know, they've been light on numbers sort of all season town, yet these pair have, have barely played. You know, they, they had a little spell in November, December where they, they came in a bit, I suppose, but they've not been options called on of late, have they? They, they just haven't been involved. They haven't started either of them for a good while. We always thought Cosgrove would go back and go elsewhere, didn't we? That, but how that drug dragged on for the entirety of the month, I'm not quite sure. Um, Steve Cottrell called it technicalities. I'm not really so privy to that. I can only imagine it's to do with the parent club and, and finding a new suitor type thing. Obviously, he's gone to Wimbledon, uh, where Town drew 1-1 on, on Saturday. So he's gone there and, you know, they're looking for a striker after losing Ollie Palmer to, to Wrexham, aren't they? And they'll hope that Cosgrove can come in and score the goals to get them out of trouble because they're below town in the table. Rakeel Pike has also gone, as you say, he's left on loan until the end of the season. Um, yeah, he's midway through his three-year deal at town, isn't he, after being brought in by Sam Ricketts. And he's, I mean, he, his town career just hasn't ever got off the ground, has it? He, he hasn't ever been able to get going, you know, injuries, not been able to force his way into the team, you know, a couple of things, not doing enough on the bench. So that feels like an okay move for him. You know, I know Scunny are down the wrong end of league too, but he knows key Phil there, doesn't he? And he can go and get games that he needs, hopefully. And, you know, who knows, he might score a few. So, yeah, um, another exit. That's two today of, obviously, no, sorry, yeah, two today. We've all, three today. We've all better, sorry. Three today and, and four exits for the month as a whole. There we go. And just uh, just finally, before we wrap up and sort of conclude and get your opinions on the on this window, um, Shrewsbury Town fans went into a bit of a frenzy over the weekend when John Nolan departed Ipswich Town. Yeah. Um, I know his, his time at his time at Portman Road was sort of hampered by injury and stuff after that superb spell with uh, with Salah, you know, where he helped them to, to sort of the cusp of, uh, uh, you know, the top of League One and that successful season they had under Paul Hurst. You know, we heard this morning that it was there was a bit of substance in the in that Salah might have been interested, but was it ever close, Lewis, or was it just a bit of a tenuous link? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Possibly the latter, to be honest, mate. I, we heard that from the Ipswich end, didn't we? And information, I I mean, like like anyone, when there's a free agent, I suppose they're offered round clubs. Like I think that's that's the case, you know, and, and questions would have been asked to to all clubs um, or certainly a lot of clubs in, in need of perhaps that kind of midfielder, which, you know, you could make a case that Shrewsbury are. But uh, no, I was told that um, Town would not. You know, would not be in for John Nolan, who, of course, is as a free agent can can move wherever at any time. You know, he's not bound to the deadline, is he? Um, because he's left it, which as you say. But no, I was told that Town wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be in for him. weren't sort of interested in in him. Actually, I I'm not sure whether this has been reported yet, but I was told sort of on the fitness front. You know, he's had bad injuries, hasn't he? He's been out for a long term. Uh, been out of a long term problem, and I believe I'm right in saying he hasn't played for Ipswich this season. So. You know, I think he's 30 in a few months, Nolan. So perhaps it's understandable on that front. You know, he, he's, he, his recent physical fitness record is is not great, unfortunately, for him, you know, despite the great time he had here. So I don't think um, that one was ever seriously looked at from this end. Uh, there were a couple of other bits today, weren't there? It was quite quite a bit going on. I mean, we had the um, the Callum Camps link from, from Fleetwood, um, talented midfielder who I, I gather town were interested in, were keen on. I think Bristol Rovers were too. His former manager, Joey Bart, and that I think I'm right in saying nothing's happened there. I think he's still at Fleetwood, so he shall play at the Meadow on Saturday, ironically, with Fleetwood um, alongside Toto Enciala. And who knows, John Nolan might pitch up there, maybe. Um, yeah, so there was that one as well. It's 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 been a bit of a busy one, really. It's all sort of blurred into one. It's been a bit of a frantic, frenetic um, day, but we've got there, haven't we? And yeah, town fans will assess the window how you know with with what they think maybe the dust will settle in a couple of days but i i understand why they're disappointed not to see you know a forward thinking player come through the door i you know i i get it two have left today you know the left wing back's gone who was a big part of their attacking sort of armory you know albeit another's arrived to replace him so i, I understand you know that supporters would argue and I think there's a fair case that when the window started you know the the squad needed more numbers you know in it you know more options um 
you know, we finished the window with four going out and four coming in. So in terms of numbers, it's as you were, isn't it? Um, in terms of forward options, you know, and as we know, they haven't scored too many goals this season. It's the area that they need to, you know, they could have done with perhaps addressing or certainly, you know, hope to see more goals in the second half of the season. You know, look look tight at the back, don't they, as we've said. Um, that has, hasn't been added to other than Saiku Jana um say kujana and in, in, in the opening days of the window so you can understand that and you know i'm not privy i don't know you know we can obviously ask him later in the week when we see the uh, the manager for the press conference whether town were looking into forward players today that's not something that i've heard um they may, may well have been it wouldn't be the biggest surprise so there, there could be a frustration there that nothing's come off um you know from from what i've heard they were looking at sort of midfielders that didn't come off, did it? Obviously, another thing worth mentioning on Tom Flanagan, by the way, we talked about earlier, he can play at right back. So with his central defensive arrival, he, you know, he could do a job at right wing back, presumably, if required. Um, obviously, give Elliot Bennett a breather, who's been an ever present this season, hasn't he? And, and allow possibly Bennett to play in central midfield if, if required. So that is another option. Hopefully, Flanagan can do a decent job at right wing back, not his natural position, of course. But um, yeah, I understand. You know, I understand. I'm not. I'm not sure what you think, Johnny. But I understand how town fans sort of are feeling at the moment. You know, the the end of the window is raw, isn't it? It's just happened. I'll better one of these sort of star players has just gone. Um, but I get it. You know, with we expected Cosgrove to leave. We didn't necessarily expect Pike to leave. You know, just despite the fact that he's sort of not not been heavily involved. But when two go, you do maybe think. The summer, you know, summer afoot, someone coming in to, to possibly replace them just for another forward number, you know, just to provide that support for Udo and Bowman. So I get the frustration, you know, I can't say at this point whether the manager and the club are frustrated at missing out on a couple, we're not sure, perhaps that will come to light. But um, yeah, as, as you were, four in, four out. And, you know, I think the arrivals today on paper, on an individual case, look like good players, good, good acquisitions. But I can get why fans think, you know, we wanted more. We wanted something in this position that hasn't happened and, and don't quite understand why that hasn't come off. But this is this is the transfer window, isn't it? And Town have now, and, you know, Steve Cottrell's now got what he's got for the remainder of the season. And and these players, you know, minus or better, need to work a new left wing back into the system, need to come up with, you know, regular goal, you know, enough goals within them and keep, you know, staying as tight as they are at the back to, to get the points to get clear of trouble. Because as we know, I think it's four points, isn't it? They're, they're clear of the drop zone still. So work to be done in that regard. Obviously, starting with a massive home game coming up on Saturday. Um, hopefully, you know, thing, things will things will fall into place. I, you know, I can understand Steve Cottrell's confidence in the players that have helped get town away from trouble. But, you know... <laughs> They've been light on numbers. That it's been a big ask for the eleven to keep going. Um, I'm sure we'll see a bit more of these new players to, to add to that. But I, you know, I have confidence that the 11, 12, 13, 14 they've got can you know do have enough to get them out of out of trouble and away from that drop zone. That has to be the aim, I suppose. So so we shall see. There you go. Positive note to end from from Lewis Cox on what has been a very busy, busy deadline day. I'm sure managers would like it to be a bit more quieter, but as I tweeted and about I, 20 minutes ago, and I, and said, I tweeted about 20 minutes ago, every, everyone in football seems to get to eight o'clock on deadline day and just oh. have a nosebleed and just go a bit mad. So, um, so there we go. It's got to be time for bed yet, mate. It's got to be. It's got to be. So there we go. That's uh, that's a, that's your lot from Shrewsbury Town today. They brought four in, four out in the window. And for all the rest of your reaction to the window, go to shopstar.com.